to warm up with a couple of marks. Do you guys ever do that? I do that fairly often. I find sometimes if I just move my hand across the paper, that that's a way for me to really think about just getting my blood pumping a little bit. Okay, so these are the Rembrandts. These are the ones that I'm used to, and I'm just gonna write here so you guys remember what's what. And let's do the Terry Ludwig ones. Let's do a similar color. We'll do like yellow ochre peachy, okay? That's pretty soft. These are really, I can almost feel the pastel shrinking <laughs> while I draw. The Rembrandts are a lot harder. And tell me in the chat, out of these different brands, which ones have you guys used? What are your preferences? Because I don't think that there's such a thing as a pastel that's bad. It's just, what is your preference? Okay, wow, these are really stiff. I mean, they're pretty much what I remember them to be, which is that they're pretty hard and they don't have that nice, soft, velvety feel. They're not stiff. They just definitely have that difference. I'm so curious <laughs> about this brand which again, if you guys missed it, Diane Townsend, because they're just, they're so cute. <laughs> I don't know, I've never looked at art supplies and thought they were so cute before. Oh, weird. That's so weird. These feel very pumice stone-like. They're, they're pretty coarse. Let, let me compare these to the Terry Ludwigs again. Okay, the Terry Ludwigs are definitely softer. These here, I'm just gonna write this so you guys can see it. The Diane Townsend. Okay, so you guys can see that. These are coarse. I mean, I feel like I'm drawing with a pumice stone, if that makes any sense. Weird. I mean, the other funny thing about the Diane Townsend pastel is it doesn't have a lot of weight to it which is surprising because actually a lot of these other ones are pretty heavy. Like if I hold the Terry Ludwig one, if I just do this, like it feels heavy. This one feels like if it were that big and the same weight as the Terry Ludwig, it should weigh a lot, but not actually. It's actually pretty porous in a way. So this is pretty interesting. So it looks like from looking in the chat that we have a lot of people that have experienced lots of different types of brands. I think for today, I'm just gonna focus on the Diane Townsend and also the new pastels. And maybe we'll have another one where we use all four brands <laughs> as a comparison, because I think it would be kind of fun to be talking about that. Okay, let's get all of our troops lined up. Who's ready to draw? I am so ready to draw. <laughs> I had a really chill, but somewhat boring day, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I, I like my life nice and boring. I don't need any drama. <laughs> and by the way, you guys, I will be looking at the chat every now and then. So if you guys have a question, you have a comment, put it in the chat. And when I take breaks every now and then, I'll go back and I'll scroll up and see what people are saying. And so if I don't reply to your question or comment right away, that's why, because I can't just draw and do that at the same time. Now, the reference photo links, they are in the YouTube video description below. You can see there are several. There are three on the screen right now that you guys can see in the lower left-hand corner. And draw along with me in any media, and I would love for you guys to join me in the Discord and the Art Alongs channel so I can see what you guys are up to. And if you want the specifics of the supplies, those are also in the YouTube video description below. You know something, guys? I'm going to do something really weird. I'm not going to do thumbnails. <laughs> I'm just going to wing it and see what happens. So, yeah, I, I know. what What is going on with me? I have no idea. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> let's, let's walk on the wild side. I mean, for me, this is what's wild. Okay, I'm going to start out. Well, I'm looking at the photo right now that has this like wooded fence going back into the distance. And there's like big tree that's coming up the top. And I suppose the steps 
over here. I mean, you got to start light. If you're going to do this, make it up as you go along, no thumbnail, wild west way of drawing. That's the way to give yourself flexibility. Like I'm already seeing right now that I made this too high. So actually, I would say people ask me all the time, like, oh, can you erase pastels? You can, but it's a lot easier at this early stage because I only have one color. There is very little pastel on the surface of the page. So I find it much more manageable in the beginning. Like I don't mind doing it now, but later on when I have the drawing more built up, that's not gonna be so much the case. My goal for today, and tell me if you guys are drawing with me, what is your goal for today? Set a goal for today's drawing. It can be small, it can be big, whatever you guys want it to be, think about that. And by the way, in case you're wondering, I am using this brown one. This is the new pastel, okay? I'm gonna stick with the new pastel for a little while because the new pastel, it's so hard that it's good for doing this light sketching because it doesn't make a big mess. And also I'm just not ready to toss in big patches of color just yet. So we're just gonna start with the new pastel for now. And I'm gonna leap between all the photos. Like for example, I'm actually gonna go now to the photo of the house. I love this photo, okay? It's this strange little mysterious house in the distance. And I'm gonna put it up here. I don't know, it just looks like it doesn't, belong there? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I don't think it's haunted. It looks nice. It seems like it was recently built. I mean, most things in Utah are pretty recent compared to a lot of places in the world, but I love that little moment. Tell me in the chat, what is the story of this house? Who lives there? Why is it by itself? Is there a deep, dark secret? Or maybe it's just rich people who wanted to live on a hill. I have no idea, but this is what I like to do sometimes when I'm working is to create these narratives because it just makes it more fun. Then you don't have to feel that everything has to be so accurate. Okay, I already don't like this. I feel like this is taking up too much space. I think what I wanna do is move down the steps and the fence. And again, I'm just making stuff up on the fly right now, guys. I, <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason. So those of you guys who want an explanation for why I'm doing what I'm doing, you might be a little bit disappointed. So what I'm doing right now is just moving everything down. And I'm gonna use these three big logs as an anchor point. Like there's this really big one it comes down here. And I do want a little piece of this tree, not too much. That still feels a little bit high. I feel like maybe I want that to come down. So let's do a couple of uh, adjustments. I do really like that fence, but I'm worried about this foreground being too large. And that's why I'm taking the eraser and moving it down. So let's put the stairs so they start up here, move the fence so it's all the way down here. Oh, okay, yeah, that's pretty dramatic, yeah. So if you wanna erase pastel, you can see I'm having no trouble doing that right now, but that's because there's so little of it and also it's one color and the new pastels don't make a lot of powder. They're very hard in that way, but sometimes that's what you need. It just really, really depends, okay. Yeah, I like that lower because you know something? I want to do some sky today. I didn't do any sky the last time we did a landscape image, and I want to make sure I give myself the opportunity to really explore that. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. It feels a little bit more grounded. Now I have a little more flexibility. Like in the beginning, I had the fence all the way up here, but if I do that, I'm not going to have any room to do the sky. So I think that was a good compositional move. Okay. Let's take a look at what people are saying in the chat. 
Starving Artist says, Clara, use hard pastels for underlayers, medium for mid layers, soft for top layers, a bit like lean to fat layers and oils. That's a great suggestion. I mean, that totally makes sense because the really soft layers, they're going to get ruined if you put a hard layer on top of that. So that's great. I love the way you're thinking about that. Conceptual Truth says, I had a long day of Zoom meetings and I need art therapy. Okay, well, hopefully we can take care of that for you guys today. Carrie Ann says, this is my second landscape. I hope to do better than the last one. You know something though? Don't worry about it. We all want to do that. I mean, who doesn't want to be better than the last time they sat down? But just remind yourselves, you guys, nothing is linear in terms of your progress as an artist. That's why I say to people, listen, if you really do want to measure your progress somehow, measure it in terms of years and in terms of months. Don't do it in terms of days or even weeks because things fluctuate so much that I think sometimes there's a lot of pressure to feel like, oh, I've got to do better. I mean, I want to do better. <laughs> Whether I actually do do better is up for debate and does not happen all the time. Angie says, I tend to sketch out a rough picture based on references and then thumbnail based on my sketch. So I'm constantly fine tuning my own initial ideas. Also, I love that weird little house. I know because the thing is in Utah, there are a lot of houses on the mountains. Like that's not really a new thing. But why was that one by itself? I, I just, I didn't have a really <laughs> valid explanation for why that was the case. 64 bits says, I'm just going to continue my coloring page. I'm learning the fundamentals. I only started like a few weeks ago, excluding perspective, and I just need a relaxed day. Hey, I feel you on that. And we're not going to cover linear perspective because this is not a linear perspective situation, but we are going to talk serious, hardcore atmospheric perspective today because this is a pretty complex space that I'm putting together. And it's not going to make sense without atmospheric perspective. So pop quiz. <laughs> and those of you guys in the chat, who can explain what is atmospheric perspective? You only have one sentence, though. That's your atmospheric perspective pitch. One sentence to explain what is atmospheric perspective. OK, I feel better about that placement. So now I'm going to move myself all the way up to the clouds. And I know I have three cloud photos. But I think two of them are too exciting. They might take away too much attention from the foreground. So I'm going to use the cloud photo that's on my screen in the lower left-hand corner. And so really what that is, there's like a big cloud. Actually, I probably shouldn't use brown. I probably should use white just so that <clears throat> I don't add any like unnecessary color back there because I like how this cloud up here, it's, it's pretty simple and it'll be a good background for that tree. So I'm gonna put the tree on top of it. So let's say bulk of the cloud is about there and then it whittles down, it sort of disintegrates in a way into these little pieces down here at the bottom. I guess there's a little patch up there. These clouds are from Mount Pleasant, which is about two hours south of Salt Lake City. And we were staying there for a little while when we initially moved. And it, it's like your own personal movie. <laughs> These clouds, they change every day. They're changing throughout the day. And I mean, they're more interesting than a lot of the things I see on Netflix. So <laughs> like, I just really wanted to include these. Okay, I don't like the house very much. So I'm going to go in and maybe readjust where it is. Like I'm trying to figure out how big do I want the house in relation to everything. I think I'm going to put this hill there. I'm going to make this one more slanty than it actually is. Although, do I want the house higher? because then maybe it's a little bit more ominous if it's higher. 
but then I don't want to mess with the sky being too small. These are the things that go through your head <laughs> when you're trying to figure out some of these ideas. I think I want it lower and we're going to make it pretty small. It's barely even going to be in the image, in fact. But I, I love this house. I knew when I, I was like, I need to draw that house sometime. I don't always think that. When I take the reference photos for the Flickr page, oftentimes I'm like, oh, that would look cool. But I don't oftentimes say, oh, I need to draw that. I just knew this house is in my future. <laughs> and here it is right now. You know what? I want this to tilt a little bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this angle more dramatic because I want this diagonal. Does everybody see this? You have a diagonal here and you have a diagonal here and then you have the tree moving forward in that direction. So that's a little cheat thing I'm going to do where I'm just going to make things more angled than they actually are for the sake of my composition. And you can do that. You guys don't have to be married to these reference photos. They can be whatever you need them to be. Yeah, I think I like that a lot better. Okay, and then this one's gonna go like almost off the page, this log and this one as well, like that. Hmm. Let's do some squinting. Can you guys squint with me so I don't feel like such an idiot? <laughs> this is like my life is like squinting at artwork. I'm looking at this and I'm looking at this and I feel that this is too flat. So I'm gonna cheat here too. I'm gonna make the angle of this plane more dramatic. Really, this to me, although we're talking about soft pastels, I really am trying to show you guys how you can think about your reference material as like raw materials, that you don't just sit down and copy it. You take the best parts of what it is you're interested in. I think I could be on board with that. You know, let me do a little bit more on this tree because I feel like this tree is pretty important and it's not really something I can let go. Oh, and actually I didn't even see this until I looked more carefully, but you do see a little bit of that log coming downwards. Like, ugh. So mushy. I'm trying to keep this pretty structured because my normal gut response to soft pastels is that they're going to make a mess. So I'm always feeling like, oh, I need to keep that mess under control. So I am drawing in a pretty sparse manner, which is different than how I think I'd be behaving if I was using, say, charcoal or something like that. Okay, so the tree, I might not even draw the whole tree but let's just give it a little bit more personality and maybe even steal a little bit of this upper right-hand corner. That's pretty good. Cool. All right. Erica is asking, how does one establish the foreground and the background? Every time I try to draw a landscape, everything in it seems to be more 2D and flat. I think, Erica, you have to decide in advance what is the foreground and what is the middle ground and what is the background. So let me explain to you guys what my plan is. My plan is this fence. Oh, look, there's all these X's in there. I can think of a movie that starts with the letter X. I can think of several, actually. Anyway, this to me is the foreground. So I have the stairs here. I have the fence here, okay? Now, the middle ground for me is probably this hill, this hill, mm, sort of the house, although I want the house to be far, far away. So I actually, let's say the house is in the background and then the clouds to me are the background. So if you can break it down in a more concrete way, so you go into the drawing, identifying that is the middle ground, that is the background. Cause I think a lot of people don't do that. I think a lot of people, they just sit down and they draw and then they finish it and go, oh, how do I make space? And it's like, you have to go into the landscape with that idea because if you have that idea established, that affects how I'm going to draw things. Because you know something? I was actually, does anybody else do this? <laughs> I go back to my old work and I just, 
look at it for a while and I do a little self critique. I say, what is it about this drawing that I wish I had done? And it just occurred to me after I did this draw along, I was like, you know what? I didn't show them how to smudge anything. And while I know that you don't always have to smudge, I was like, you know, that's not really showing the range of the material. And so my plan for today is really to get some smudging back here. So what I'm planning to do is a lot of smudging in the background. So it's very soft and very airy. And my plan is to contrast that against a foreground that's like harsh and dark contrast and direct marks. That's my plan. Things might change. That's totally fine. But I go into the drawing with that idea. I don't just do it last minute. I mean, today I'm not doing thumbnails. That That is like rocking my world right now, guys. I am like, whoa, what's happening? I don't know what's going on. But yes, that is very helpful. Paint Water says, I appreciate these live streams where you talk aloud about your process. Thank you so much. Well, I hope it helps you guys to realize that none of this is straightforward. A lot of it is making it up as you go along. And so much of being ours is just trial and error. It's like, hmm, I think I'll try that. That looks like crap. Let's not do that again. <laughs> like, that's just how you learn. There's no real specific guide for how to do that. All right, so we've got some great atmospheric perspective. Definitions, conceptual truth says things further away are fuzzier and grayer because there are more particles of atmosphere between you and them. Hellish D says atmospheric perspective is movies when background characters are blurred. Absolutely. You will see in a lot of films that they really push that. Like, especially if you think about, I was watching Sherlock the other day. <laughs> it was for the anatomy stream, I swear. And you know, they do this thing where they focus on the person in the background and then they change the focus and all of a sudden Benedict is in focus and you're looking, at, I mean, I was looking at him the whole time, but they do that all the time in movies. So that's really important. Nikolai is asking, can we still join the raffle? Just join if you already mentioned it. I did not. So thank you very much for bringing that up. If you guys would like to contribute there is just today and tomorrow to contribute to the winter raffle. And we are having a special stream. You guys, the entire staff, <laughs> all six of us, we're gonna be on the stream together tomorrow, which is Saturday, January 30th at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's an unusual time. We usually do not stream at that time, but it is a final hour of the raffle. And so we're going to be there to egg you guys on and show you that we we are worth it, okay? We, we need your support to keep this up and running. And if you guys want to know how to contribute to the raffle, the raffle link is in the YouTube video description below. And the finale, again, tomorrow at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, let's start in the back and work our way to the front. That's not to say that I'm going to finish the back. I'm just going to get it going. Okay. For this, I think, oh, you know what I just realized? There's no white <laughs> in this set. Okay. I guess I'm not going to do white. Let me use the Terry Ludwigs then because this is like a nice chunky white. And I just don't want to do the clouds with the new pastel because I feel like this is not going to give me the substance or the powder that I'm looking for back there. So let's let's do some Terry Ludwig. And I'm gonna do a lot of smudging right now. I'm gonna do a lot of thin smudging. So I'm gonna build this up pretty slow. My feeling about chalk pastels, tell me you guys if you agree. I think that there are some media, they, they go too fast. I think charcoal is one of those. I would say that chalk pastel is one of those. It's almost like the medium moves faster than your brain does. And so for that reason, when I'm working with chalk pastel or charcoal, I do have a tendency to try to slow myself down a bit because if I don't do that, it's like the drawing happens before I'm ready for it to happen. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's like a wild animal and you have to tame it. And then there's other materials like pencil where you're just trying to push the material and it's so freaking slow that it doesn't move fast enough. 
So that's something to think about is what is the pacing of your material? Like to me, this is a fast pace. And back here, there's not a lot, but I do want to have some indication of something. So I'm going to just do a really light pass like that. And I'm going to build up slowly. So see this big dense area of white? It's not going to stay that way. I'm definitely going to do more for now. I know this is darker, but I'm not actually going to show that. And if you guys are wondering, I am not drawing every single cloud. I'm just moving around. I know some people really do want to observe and draw everything. I can't do that. I'm not one of those people. I just don't have the patience. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me, well, why do you do? I'm like, I don't have patience. <laughs> I'm like, I can't wait around for that. That's too much. <laughs> okay. Now what I'm going to do, actually, what I should have done, I don't have my paper towels here, but I'll just use my hands to get this going. Let's just make a big mess. Actually, I think I need paper towels. Give me a minute. Talk amongst yourselves. Discuss who's hotter, Michael Fassbender or Benedict Cumberbatch. Give me a minute. I just realized that was a very unfair question. You know why? Because it's not that one is hotter than the other. They're like hot in different ways. So it's like, how does the hotness affect you? What, what type of impact does the hotness have? <laughs> Guys, you know what happened yesterday? <laughs> so I know I've been talking to a lot of you about clocking out, trying to separate your work life from your personal life, because you have to do that. You have to be protective of that, I think. Kat Huang <laughs> sent me a Slack message yesterday, kind of late. Kat Huang is one of the teaching artists here, in case you guys don't know. And <laughs> she sends me this video of Hugh Jackman. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's some, it's a commercial for shoes, I think. But anyway, he's like naked in the whole thing. <laughs> he's just wearing these shoes. And so Kat sends me that she's like, have you seen this video? I'm like, of course, who do you think I am? Like, I am so on top of the Hugh Jackman news, especially when it comes to, you know, <laughs> new video footage. And so after that, I was just like, hmm, what's he doing? Let's go look his Instagram. And it's like, before I knew it, it was like this rabbit hole of, well, what's Michael Fassbender doing? Hmm, hashtag Benedict. It was really bad. Do you guys ever find that all roads on the internet lead to celebrities? It's like, no matter what I'm doing, like I'll get on and I'll be like, what is that Leonardo da Vinci painting? And then within like five minutes, I'm reading about J-Lo and A-Rod. Are they still together? Oh, you know what I just found out? Okay, guys, I don't really think celebrity gossip is that interesting most of the time. Okay, this floored me though. Who knew that freaking Orlando Bloom is with Katy Perry? I'm like, what? Like, I don't know how I stumbled on this, but I just was like, Oh my God, that, that is like, okay, that's kind of juicy. How did I not know that? <laughs> okay. I also think that's sort of wrong. I don't like that pairing. Like when Ben Affleck and what's her name? What's her name? Jennifer something. Anyway, when they were together, I was like, they're a cute couple. I totally believe that. But of course they got a divorce. But anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna push that back. I'm gonna come back to that because I feel like the danger here is to draw one spot at a time. And I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna try to really work the whole thing all at once. This has like a golden -y. That is way too unsaturated. I think we need something more like this to see. Did Orlando Bloom and Katy Perry have a baby? I can't remember if the news I saw was that they were married or gonna get married or had a kid. I am so, cause guys, I did have a crush on Orlando Bloom a long time ago. Not, not like a mega crush, but he was so cute in Lord of the Rings. I mean, Legolas was kind of useless. <laughs> he, he sort of spent the whole movie just restating the obvious, but come on, he was so cute in that movie. So I had a little thing for him. Didn't last very long. 
was it like a multiple year type of thing? <laughs> but anyway, I paid a little attention to Orlando Bloom, but then I moved on <laughs> to other people. And uh, yeah, I just was kind of disappointed to hear that he's with Katy Perry. It just doesn't feel right. It's kind of like when Ben Affleck and JLo were like, that was wrong. That was real. Jennifer Gardner. That's her name. That's his ex-wife's name. Okay. I suppose I really should put the house in there. The house is pretty blue, but I don't really want to get that crazy just yet. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to block out a little shape. I'm not really going to do more than that. I just want to show that there's something there. I'm not going to do more than that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that does not look good. Ugh, I don't like that. Uh, it looks like there's a cube in the sky. Like, what the heck? What am I thinking? Okay. That's a little bit better. Because what I'm trying to do, I'm really trying to maintain a certain degree of cohesion. And a big part of that is asking yourself whether the parts connect together. So you don't get these awkward patchwork quilt drawings, which I definitely have been known to do and don't want to do. Okay, let's move on to the bottom section. And it is hard when you're navigating, I think, between so many different photos, you do have to jump around quite a bit. Now, I don't think I should do the fence first. Let me think this through. I feel that I sort of need the fence though, because if I don't bulk up the fence, aren't I gonna get lost? I'm not sure. You know what I'm gonna do first? So I'm gonna do the stairs. Let's just avoid it. These are so weird. Did you guys see this? Look at this. I'll put it up to the webcam so you can see, but it's like, it looks like hardened Play-Doh. It's really weird. Okay. Another thing that I have also done, my reference photos, they're pretty small on my computer. I did that on purpose because I don't want to look at detail right now. Detail would just be a huge detraction. So I'm just trying to look at very simple, basic shapes. All right, and let's use our handy paper towel. I think one of the reasons I like doing the smudging at this stage is I know it's easy to go over it. Smudging, you can always go over, but once you smudge something, then you can't bring that toothy mark back. I am going to do a little bit here. Let's just, at the very least, hint at some of this. I guess these Diane Townsend ones, they... I don't know. I feel like I'm drawing with Play-Doh that got hard. They're, they're a very awkward shape. Like they're very blunt. Like I can't imagine that I could use these for anything remotely detailed, which is not a problem necessarily. I mean, maybe that's kind of nice, but it's not as versatile as say the Rembrandts. Like it seems pretty limited in terms of where it can go. Oh crap. That was a total mistake. I did not mean to do that. Oh, and they're really easy to smudge. Wow. All right, let's see what people are talking about in the chat. Dave Halendra says, the last time I touched pastel color was middle school. I lost interest in pastels because watercolor is more fun for me. I'm bad at using pastels. You know what, Dave? <laughs> That's probably just about the same amount of time since I worked with soft pastels. I used them quite a bit my sophomore year at RISD because I was in illustration and I honestly couldn't think of any other colored media, which is dumb because there's a million other colored media out there, but I don't use these very much. So you guys are gonna see me stumble. Alisa says, I've known about the Orlando Katie stuff, but every time I heard about it, it shocked me all over again. It's just, it's not good. How long <laughs> do you think it's gonna, I shouldn't say this, but I like, I told, they're not gonna last. There's just no way, it's just so weird. <laughs> Nicole says, I never thought of media 
having their own pace, but it makes so much sense. I actually threw my pastels away after the frustrations of it going wild and faster than me enjoying the process. I definitely noticed that when I was in art school that the drawing would happen before I was ready. <laughs> and I don't like that. It's like you feel like you're behind. It's not a good feeling. So I, I think it's good to just recognize, hey, you know what? When I use this, things just happen more quickly. And then you can adjust yourself accordingly in terms of your drawing process. Oh, this is a nice tip from Soyton Lee, who says you can break your pastels up to get hard edges if you need. And that's a good idea. You could probably also take an X-Acto blade and cut it up if you wanted to as well. Some person is saying, how did you know you wanted to teach? Is it a passion? It is definitely a passion. But if you guys go back and you watch my profile stream, look for the stream that says how I became art prof. You guys can find it there. It's pretty recent. I think I only did it about a week ago or something. Oh, this is too beefy. I need the new pastel again. Let's use this like very dark turquoisey blue. But if you guys go back and you want, oh, this is too bright. I don't like that. Let's do the purple. If you guys go back and you watch that stream, I'll tell my whole story about how I got into teaching it was an accident. <laughs> it's because I didn't want to go to high school. And I had this opportunity to do an internship with my old elementary school art teacher, not because I wanted to teach, but because I was like, dude, I want to get out of here. And so that was my reasoning for doing that internship. And then after a while, I was like, hey, this is fun. I sort of love this. One thing led to another because when I was in college, I needed a job in the summer. And I was like, hey, what do I know how to do? Oh, I know how to teach kids. And when I got out of art school, what do I know how to do? I know how to teach kids. <laughs> so it was an accident. I know a lot of people do set out to be teachers and that's great, but it was not on purpose for me. It just happened. And it's a passion in a way that the artwork is not. I'm not saying I'm not passionate about the artwork. I just think I'm a much better teacher than I am artist. I'm an okay artist. I just think that I'm better at teaching compared to my skills as an artist, but it's all related. I don't think that it's I mean, they are two separate skills. I'm not saying they're not, but I think sometimes there's the assumption that, oh, because you're a good artist, you must be a good teacher. I'm like, uh-uh, that is not true. I'm going to keep this pretty sparse because you know what it is, you guys? The sparseness makes me feel like I, I have control. So I'm not putting down that much pigment right now. Like it probably looks to you guys like I'm not doing very much, but that's a way for me of holding myself back so that I have the flexibility because if I let the drawing get too far out of my control, I'm gonna lose control of where it goes and then I'm gonna build it up too fast and that I don't like. I don't know about you guys, but when the pastel starts to get very heavy, there's a lot of it on the paper, you can't make changes as easily. It's not that you can't make changes, it's just not as easy. And so I'm trying to be very conservative about the quantity of pastel that I put down because I want to preserve that feeling. This tree, I'm not going to do until the last minute. I think I'm going to build up the clouds first and then go into that later on. But I do need to pull out some of these highlights. And I do feel that I'm being so literal about the color, but you know what? Too bad. I'm, I'm working without thumbnails. I get to do whatever I want with the other stuff. I'm taking my own artistic risk by not doing thumbnails. So, <laughs> But you know something, you guys? It's a good change of pace. It's good to do something that is not your normal thing. I think that's totally healthy. I think it's something you should do now and then just to change things up. And you'll notice what I'm trying to do here is I'm drawing in between the fence. Because I think the natural assumption is people would say, oh, you need to sketch the fence very precisely. But you know something, I'm not going to do that because I think that's a little bit boring and not necessary. So what I'm doing more is I'm observing very particular shapes. Like I'm saying, okay, I see a triangle here. 
I see a stroke that goes downwards. So mess with this, guys. You, you don't have to be such a slave to your reference. And here I'm going to build up this little like patch. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a lot of fun with this <laughs> because I think one of the keys to uh, landscape is abstraction. Just not thinking so literally about it. Like a lot of people would say, oh, it's a fence. It's a fence with grass behind it. But I'm not even thinking about that. I'm thinking more about where is this shape? How does that shape relate to this? And what's happening? Like you could say, oh, draw the log. But I'm not drawing the log. I'm drawing the colors around the log because to me, that's what sticks out. That background sticks out to me more than that actual piece of log, which a lot of people, their assumption would be, oh, okay, that's a lot more interesting. Hellish D says, I just realized something because I usually draw in ink. I train myself to be specific about my strokes and lines. As an ink, it's really easy to mess up with the line art, but now I am more free. I think that's good though. I think that working with different media gets you to change your behavior, which I think is great because then it's like you're speaking all these different languages, which is really fun. Lavina Chung says, how do you use multiple reference photos for one artwork? All right, the key thing, you guys, you have to have all the photos visible the whole time, okay? You guys can't see this, obviously, but right now, I have all three photos pulled up on my laptop, and I'm jumping between them. That is very important. And also notice, I'm not drawing piece by piece. Like, I did a little here, little here, little here. I'm going to do a tiny bit more, and then I'm going to move back up. So a big part of getting multiple photos to work together is jumping around, staying very even, okay? Because a lot of times drawings done from multiple photos, people don't hide it very well. And it really ends up looking like a collage, like you just stuck one landscape on top of another. But also notice I'm keeping pretty soft edges. Like I'm not really defining any particular boundaries. Like this cloud is almost, mushing into that landscape. But I think that degree of mushiness, at least in the beginning, is very necessary. And Elisa says, honestly, I think being a good teacher is a far more valuable skill in a teacher than being a good artist. I've had teachers whose art I loved but hated their classes because they just couldn't teach. But you know something? <laughs> the reason why people don't think that much about teaching career. There's no glamour in it. I mean, it's like nobody gets accolades for being a great art teacher. It's, it's not like they're going to give you a MacArthur Foundation grant for that. Like there's just no glamour or fame to being a teacher, which is why it's like, you know, the, the people who are teaching, you really can mostly assume that they're there because they really want to be there. Not every profession is like that. I mean, I know that certainly some professions pay more than others. And I know people who go into medicine, not because they love medicine, but because their parents wanted them to, or because they wanted to have a nice race car or something like that. But I mean, from what I've seen, teachers that I know, they want to be there. They really do, for the most part. I mean, once in a while, you'll meet somebody who doesn't seem like they want to be there, but that's not very common. Um, so th there is that part of the profession that I like. But I get you. I mean, when you have a rotten teacher, it really sucks. So I, I feel you on that. And uh, I don't know, I'm not very quiet <laughs> about it. Like when I had a teacher I didn't like, I was not nice. I, I'm not advocating this because it's not nice, you guys. Don't do that. Don't do what I did. <laughs> I mean, I understand. Okay, we need to bulk up this bottom area. And I guess the Diane Townsend, I mean, there's all these different sets. This is only one set. And you can buy a set that's like landscape or flesh tone or something, but I need like a burnt sienna color right now. So I'm just gonna get in here and I need to start doing some bigger swaths of color. And I'm gonna do more smudging. I don't know, I just felt so bad that <laughs> the dog drawing, I didn't do any smudging. I felt like I left out like such a key part of the process. 
that's better. And then I think I need to bulk up over here, just fill like that. Okay, let me do a little bit back here. I mean, this is pretty muted. It's like baby poop oatmeal color, <laughs> I suppose. So let's just start with this brighter yellow ochre, but then I'm gonna tone it down. Maybe I'll put like a pass of, not gray, maybe I'll just put a little bit of purple over it. So what I might just do actually is just take a little bit of the purple here and just put it over the yellow. Because sometimes you don't need that much pigment. And if I draw on that, that might actually be too much. So let me just work a little bit of that purple pigment over that middle section. Yeah, I guess, not, I don't know. I might be over smearing it, but that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> and again, not going to do that much up here. I just want to indicate that there's something up there. I mean, what I like about this process right now is I feel like I, I'm putting down a nice, like, thin glaze that I can just pull things out of. I love that. I love having something that I can remove from. Because to me, I love it when drawing feels very sculptural. And for me, when I can take and remove constantly throughout the process, it does feel like a very sculptural experience for me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just smudge everything to death and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna clarify things. Because at this stage, it's okay for me to over smudge. Like I, I, there's not a lot to lose at this stage. And I'm trying to also think, what is the spot where I do want clarity? I think in here, in this one X, which by the way, is not as tilted as I would like it to be. I don't know, I might just leave it though. So this one, I'm gonna let it pop. Let's just really smudge this. Okay, that's probably way more than I should be smudging. But I guess what I'm doing right now is I'm building atmosphere. I'm trying to push myself to create a sense of air, a sense of space. Because space is hard, space is a pain in the butt. I taught a class at RISD called Visualizing Space, taught it several times. And the concept that I gave a lot of people was, listen, the reason why space is so hard, you can't touch it. It's not concrete. It's very hard for that reason. And then the other thing too, not only can you not touch it, but it's everywhere. Like you cannot go anywhere on the planet and have there not be space. So it's this like strange illusion of this intangible thing that does not make a lot of sense. I'm trying to figure out, tell me in the chat, should I try to make this a more dull color scheme or should I make it more brilliant? I'm a little bit, I mean, the photos that I have are not that saturated, but I'm thinking I might wanna punch up the red down here at the bottom. But let's just try something. <laughs> let's just see. I might regret this. But let's use the Diane Townsend. And I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit of red. I'm just going to see if I like it. If I hate it, oh, I kind of like that. That's kind of fun. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's make this very red in the foreground, even though it's not in the photo. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the, the coolness up here. I'm going to make this very hot at the bottom in terms of temperature. Now, I know it looks like I'm not doing very much. And I know it looks like a big blur, but I'm kind of like really excited to dig into this right now. It's kind of like super exciting and fun. But what I do need to do, there's one color that is severely missing right now. And that is definitely the blue in the background. I'm not gonna do a huge amount, but I am gonna just punch some pieces of blue and I'll go back in and I'll do that. This is similar to what I was saying about painting that you, you build layers in anticipation for the next one. It's not random. You say, okay, well, I'm doing this now so later on I can do this other thing. Also, it is not an accident that the paper I picked was that orange color because I knew that the sky was in there, that bluish color. And so I was thinking it might be really fun 
to have that come across. And then the blue becomes this invader <laughs> into the yellow ochre. Okay, and let's do some smudging there too. Ugh. And the blue I know is gonna dull everything down. Now all of a sudden this whole area is gonna get very muddy, but that's not a bad thing. And actually I need to shake this out. You guys don't ever blow on your pastel drawings. That is not good for you because all the pigment goes into the air. So I'm just gonna shake it out into the trash can. Okay, little bit more smudging just to like work this a little bit more because I don't want the blue to be that prominent. I'm gonna work the white over it. Ooh, but this is kind of fun. That's getting really, really muddy. Oh, that's kind of cool. Does everybody see some of the blue just like white on top of that? So this is actually sort of like what Alex Rowe does with the complementary color underneath because I have orange underneath, but I just put blue on top. So that's a really fun relationship that I'm starting to create. Oh, that's really fun. Oh, I'm so excited. That's really cool. Wow, things are actually <laughs> going fairly well right now. Not as in I think the drawing's great, but I feel good about the foundation that I've created. Ashley is asking, what brand of pastels are you using? This brand that I'm using right now is called Diane Townsend. And I've never heard of these before, actually. I've never used them. And then the other brand that I'm using, this is New Pastels. And so these are the very thin, long ones like this. And they're a lot harder. I also have the Terry Ludwigs, which are here. I used these last time. I'm not really using them that much right now, but I'm just testing out to see what's going on. Robbed on Tuesday says it takes courage to paint like you are doing in real time with so many spectators. Or <laughs> you just get to a point where you're older and you're like, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I really don't. Like, guys, after all the war wounds that I have from teaching in academia for over a decade, I'm like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I really do not care. It's like, my stuff is just out there and whatever, like, what have I got to lose? I mean, I actually did this podcast yesterday. It was with a very old childhood friend. I really literally hadn't talked to her in like 22 years. And she's just started this podcast. And she said to me that she was so shocked that I was not very much of a perfectionist about my YouTube content. And I was like, you know, that's how you get better is not being a perfectionist, not having expectations. Because if I curated myself the way I used to, you guys would have like one video on this YouTube channel. Fine. Maybe you'd get two a year. Maybe you'd get something like that. But that has definitely helped me is just putting all that aside. It's really fun. Plus, it's like, I'm just done worrying about what people think about me. I'm like, I don't care. You don't like me too bad. That's your problem. Because I think when I was in my 20s, I told myself that I didn't care what people thought. But I totally did. I absolutely did. And now I'm like, been too, I've been through too much crap to like put up with that anymore. So I'm not so sure if it's courage or if it's just bitterness <laughs> towards all the junk that people put you through that you just throw up your arm and say, yeah, whatever. I, I don't care. <laughs> Russell is asking, how many different colors do you usually use in a single drawing? It really depends, but I would say in general, I'm not somebody who likes having a million colors. For example, when I paint, for me, having three blues is like crazy. Usually I paint with two. Having three feels insane to me. It's like not doing thumbnails. It's the wild west. But I do try to limit things because I just don't do well when I have too many colors. I feel too scatterbrained. And oftentimes I feel that I don't appreciate the colors for what they are. I think oftentimes if I have too many colors that I'm not working as hard to see those subtle shifts. I think that is pretty important.
<laughs> Starving Artist says, one of the great benefits of getting older, you don't care. Yep. Those of you older folks in the chat, tell me, isn't that the greatest thing? It's so liberating. Like, you just do not care. It's awesome. Actually, you guys, my favorite story <laughs> about not caring what other people think. This is so funny. So I was in Japan many years ago. Hang on. I'm trying to think what I want to work on next. I think I got to work on the foreground more because this has to stay pretty blurry. I mean, not that blurry, but I do need to establish better what's happening. So, okay. Yeah. Let's definitely work on that. Okay. So let me tell you my story about these two little Japanese ladies. I love them. Okay. So I was at this temple. I think it was in somewhere in rural Japan. And it was like one of those like beautiful rural spaces. And it was so like peaceful and tranquil. And <laughs> I went to this temple and there's this huge bell. I, this bell was ginormous. And I don't know what it was made of. It was probably like pure cast iron and it's like super, super old and probably some relic from many, many centuries ago. And so there are all these signs by this bell that say, do not ring the bell. Like they really did not want people to ring the bell. And like they were, they were serious about not ringing the bell. <laughs> I was like, okay, let's not ring the bell. And then like I walk a couple of steps away from the temple and then I hear the bell ringing. I'm like, dude, who's ringing the bell? Like, and I walk back and these two like little old Japanese ladies and they're like giggling. They're like, <laughs> they're, they were like so stoked to ring the bell. I'm like, awesome. Like, I mean, yeah, they shouldn't have rung the bell. I know that was not very nice. But I was like, you know what? You guys earned your right to ring this bell. You, you guys totally deserve this. <laughs> so I would like to be that little old lady that rings the bell because I don't care if I get in trouble, right? I mean, the story is only funny if you're a little old Japanese lady. If, if you're like 15 and you do that, you're just a brat, right? <laughs> it's only funny if you're older and doing it for that reason. Yeah, I think I'm really going to push this. You know something, though? I do really like. This is a nice, sweet purple. So let's just bulk that in. I'm trying to hold myself back a little bit on these steps because I'm a little worried I'm going to do too much. Oh, you know what? Let's try this. This is a nice, like, corally. It has a little bit of yellow in it. So I'm wondering if maybe distributing this color throughout would help. That's a little bit too red. I think I need some yellow. So let's just put like a quick pass. I mean, this is a really bright yellow. I might regret this, but let's just see. Oh geez, that is really bright. Ugh. I don't know if I like that. That might be a little too much. Oh wait, but that's kind of nice. Ooh. Oh, wait a second guys. I, I kind of like this yellow. <laughs> Don't ever believe your first impressions. <laughs> Actually, you know what's really weird? Some of my really close friends, I did not like them. When I first met them, like one of my closest friends from high school, I did not like her. I thought she was so vain. I mean, she sort of is vain, but <laughs> like I did not like her. But we're such good friends. We're still friends. And it's funny, like your, your impressions of people can just be so off sometimes depending on the circumstance. Although I do have another friend. I remember when I met her, I'm like, I'm gonna be friends with her. I just knew. She's the only person I ever felt that way about. Other people surprised me. I did not like my husband, by the way, when I met him, I was like, what a stuck up jerk. <laughs> you know why? Cause he said something critical about my work at RISD. It was like freshman year and we were having this critique. And I was like, what a prick. <laughs> I don't like this guy. And remember, he told me he didn't like the eyes and my self-portrait. And I remember thinking, oh my God, the eyes are the most important part of a portrait. And that's the part he doesn't like. Oh my God. I was like really, really mad. <laughs> so yes, I was wrong about that one as well. I want more of this yellow. I'm kind of kind of liking this yellow. It's really fun. I think maybe if I put some more in here. 
I shouldn't get too yellow happy though, because that definitely could wreak havoc in some of these other spots. And you know something? Let's try some of this. This is like a weird Viridian green. And I wonder if this might offset some of the really bright reds down here. So I'm going to use this. Ew, I don't really like that green. It's really blue. Ugh. Okay, I don't like that. Let's, let's get rid of that. <laughs> we don't need that. Although, wait, 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 wait. I, I kind of like it smudged. Maybe I just need to smudge it. Let's do that. Let's just do some green. And maybe I'll bulk it up here on the side. And I'll smudge it in. Maybe it's just that the green wasn't good by itself, but it is sort of nice to pull that back. Ooh, I do kind of like that. That's kind of nice. I mean, making art is such a unpredictable thing. You just never know where things are going to go. Luis is asking, how do you know what colors to change from the reference to your drawing? For example, quote, this part of the drawing looks brown. I'll use purple instead. I generally, if I see a dark color that is a shadow, I pretty much always opt for purple as a default because I know if I go for gray or black, especially in chalk pastel, I know it's going to get muddy really fast. So purple is like my version of black, which gets the value going, gives me the darkness that I want without the gray. So that's one of the reasons I do that. But also sometimes it's just about noticing a color and then heightening it. So for example, if you guys look at the reference photo, okay, down here, there definitely are patches of like an orangey burnt sienna, but I took that and turned it more into like a cadmium. So sometimes it's just like a variation on what's already there. So you say, okay, well, if there's like a peachy color, maybe I want that to be a brighter, more saturated yellow, or maybe you might say, you know what, that yellow is too bright. Let's make it a little bit less saturated. So it's not so much that I'm making up a color as much as I am looking at what's in the photo and then tweaking it because I'm not the type of person who just makes up wacky, weird colors. I mean, some people do that. I can't do that. That's not really the way I work. And so I really do use the reference photo as a starting point to say, you know what, this is about blue. And I might say, you know what, I really want this to be warm. I want this to be cool. And that's the attitude that I'm taking right now. Miriam is saying, how do we control blending when using pastel? Should we always blend? What if we overdo it? That's a great question. I think it really depends on the subject matter. And I think for a lot of people, honestly, they blend out of insecurity. That is my theory. Correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. Tell me in the chat, when you guys blend, do you think sometimes you do it because you don't know what else to do? Or sometimes I think Sometimes people think, oh, well, if it's nice and smooth, it's going to look good, but oftentimes it does not. For example, this is the dog drawing that I did on the last soft pastel drawing. There's no blending in it at all. It's all just straight chalk pastel. And I didn't think it was really necessary to blend because everything in the image is so harsh and textured. That's not the case here. And so I'm doing a lot of blending. So it's tricky. I mean, if you overdo it, I would just say add some fresh marks on top of it and let them stay. Because I'll tell you, I love the Degas pastel drawings because you can see the strokes. Like you can look at a Degas pastel and go, oh, he did that. Like you can watch him actually drawing it in the drawing. And so I much prefer just direct strokes. Like the blending for me is really hard to control. It's like a slippery fish. You don't want to do it that much. I have much more control when I don't blend. So I would say if you are feeling like, oh my goodness, the blending is messing with me and I don't know how to control it, then do a drawing where you don't blend at all, okay? Like do what I did on the dog drawing, do a drawing, no blending. I think you guys will be surprised that you can get away without blending anything and still get things across because actually what I did in this dog drawing is you start, I can show you guys a little bit here, is you just start blending with strokes. So here, for example, I'm not gonna blend with my finger, but you can blend 
with the chalk pastel. So like if I want to make this a little bit less abrupt, I'm not pressing very hard, but you can see what that's doing is it's starting to blend things together. So blending does not always mean your finger. Sometimes it means just very light crosshatch strokes to create the look of that. And Degas did that all the time. You can see it in his chalk pastel drawings that there are a lot of areas. You, like you go up close, you can see the strokes, but from a distance, it has the appearance of looking blended. That is really the difference. W315 says your drawing is looking Turner-esque. I know, I'm totally ripping him off, like big time. You know what it is? I've been thinking about Turner a lot since I moved to Utah. You know why? Because honestly, I have never been that excited <laughs> about doing landscapes. It's just not that fun. Like to me, they're just, they don't look that fun, okay? That's okay, that's fine. But the thing is, when I moved to Utah, and I was in Mount Pleasant and we're looking at all these like amazing, I'm like, okay, Turner, I get it. I, I understand, <laughs> I get you now. I never understood it, why people would wanna do landscapes. And now after being in Utah, I'm like, I get it. This makes sense to me now. So yeah, I've been thinking a lot about Turner lately for that reason. You know something, there are these like little patches of white. So I'm gonna use the new pastel it's like this little trail. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love that. I didn't even see that. Th this is why I love discovering these things later. Like this looks like there's a little snow back there, but it like melted in a couple spots. So I'm just going to put a couple strokes there. Something very minor. And I'm going to try to put in a couple of light blended yellow ochre strokes. I'm not going to blend them too much. I am going to do some on top of the white though, so the white doesn't stick out too, too much. Oh, that is really fun. Oh, I'm having so much fun, you guys. That's, that's awesome. Not my drawing. I'm just saying, just playing like this. You know what? Because I don't do a lot of very abstract stuff. Like I'm a pretty concrete artist. Like I, I'm drawing a face. I'm drawing this. I'm not a very abstract artist. So when I do get to do abstraction, it's kind of like, ooh, <laughs> walk on the wild side. That's what today is. This is not my comfort zone. Okay, I guess I better do the house, right? I've been ignoring it a little bit. Let's go back. I'm going to just fuzz it out because I didn't really do that much at first. Yeah, that's kind of fun. And this is a really good question from Rob on Tuesday. What makes you decide whether to go more abstract or more realistic? That's a great question. I think it depends on the image. For example, landscape in general, it's just more conducive to abstraction because you guys look at the photos, there are lots of spots like that. If you're doing a still life, that's not as likely. So that's how I would do it. But other times it depends on my own approach, because sometimes I think to myself, oh, Clara, you're getting too tight. You need to let go a little bit more. And other times I say, oh, your drawings are too mushy. You need to get more specific. So I would just say that I oscillate between the two. And you do have to do that as an artist. Everything you do is a reaction to something else. I don't think I'm always trying to do the same thing. It depends on what's happening. Walber says, do you think this is similar to the painting process? Oh, yes. This is so similar to painting, you guys. Really, this is like painting, but without all the solvent <laughs> and stuff. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but the mindset is very similar. I think drawing in color can really feel that way. Alyssa is asking, what is the paper you're using? So I can show you guys. So this is the paper. It is Mi Tient. Pastel assorted colors made by Canson. And actually, I did get these pastel boards from a company recently that I'm very excited to try out. So probably on the next draw along, I will take a chance to do that. So Hellish D says, my goal for today is to not blend as much and try to create harsh strokes. That's great. Write down your goal. You, you guys know that sketchbooking practice you're supposed to be maintaining, right? Right? 
write it down. Whatever artwork you're doing, write down that goal. Really, really helpful. And Hold the Bacon says, I usually blend the underpainting. Yep, that's basically what I'm doing because I feel confident to just mess with this because I know I can just go back and bulk things up from there. Okay, let's get back in there. I've got to work on the house. I want the house, I want it to be pretty vague. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm squinting at the photo and I guess it's bluish. I don't really like this blue. It's a little bit more than I would like it to be, but let's just go with it because I don't really want to make the house black. I think that would look terrible. But I also have to give it a little sense of structure. So if I don't do that, it's going to look like a big blob, which I don't like either. But I'm still going to draw in a pretty gestural way. It's hard to put architecture into the context of a landscape. Because like there are architectural elements. But again, it's like I don't want to overdo it. But I am looking at these like two planes. Do you guys see this? So that's like the upper roof. There's a lower roof. And then there's like something like that. Oh God, I hope I don't regret this. Uh, sort of thinking I might. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I need more value back there. I think it's got to get a little darker. Let's use this weird Viridian green. Well, that's kind of nice. I don't like the blue. The blue is too electric. Let's see if I can put something else in there. Okay. Let's do a little, hmm. I'm trying to figure out how detailed I want to get. I, I don't know that I should get that detailed, but I, I need some architecture though. Otherwise it's just a big blob. So let's focus on the roof. I'm drawing really slow right now so I can really like retain control over the architecture. And then there's this like chimney thing. What is that? I think it's a chimney. And then it seems like there's a little tree <laughs> that's blue <laughs> in my piece. I think I do need a little bit of like a peachy tone because there is like bright highlight there. That I don't think I can get away from. And there's quite a bit on the side. All right. Maybe something very small like that. And, and you know what else? I do really like the snow that's tumbling down. That's really beautiful. So let's put that in for sure. And then that's sort of a nice echo of what's happening back there. You know what, guys? I'm already thinking <laughs> in my head, Clara, don't mess this up. Who who has had that thought? Because I'm already having it. It's not good. <laughs> it's like you haven't even done anything. You're already worried that you're going to mess it up. But you know what it is? It's not that I'm worried I'm going to mess it up. I'm worried that the drawing is going to lose its freshness. I worry about that a lot with all my drawings. But I think even more so with Chalk Pestal because it's like, they, they just look so good when they have that like beautiful, like fresh look. And I don't want to lose that. And I'm worried I'm going to overwork this. And that's what's going to happen, which is not so great. Okay. That's why I'm taking it slow. I'm drawing really slow. For me, this is so slow. But it's because I, I don't want to overwork it. I don't want the drawing to get ahead of me. All right. I'm going to build in some patches of burnt sienna back here. Just like a quick little pass. I'm not pressing very hard. A lot of this is pressure. Like how hard are you pressing? And oftentimes you don't have to press that hard. I think people sometimes are too aggressive. And then you do, oh crap. That's not what I wanted to do. Come on, no. <laughs> Let's go with this. <laughs> Let's try that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put some of the... Uh, trying to think if, uh, I was going to say maybe I should draw clouds around that, but I sort of like that the house is like fading backwards. I, I don't know that I want to do that, but then again, oh, this is really hard because it's so tiny that it's like every little mark I make in this house matters, right? 
Like in the foreground, that's not so much the case. You know what I'm like, let me do a little bit. I'm gonna go around the top like this. I'm just gonna like do a little bit around the negative space. Cause I do want it to come out a little bit more. I'm gonna smudge it though, so it doesn't do too much. More squinting. Who else is squinting? Who else is making faces? I'm sure I look like an idiot right now. That's fine. I don't care. I'm old and I don't care. <laughs> hmm. I think I want a little bit more of that snow. Oh, and you know what else, you guys? I totally was not even looking, but there's really blue, blue in there. So let's take this like sky blue. And I'm going to squint. I'm going to pull out some of that blue. Ooh, that's really fun. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Yay. Just sprinkle some of that blue over that section. That might be all that area needs. I, I'm really conscious of overworking this. That, that's why I'm being so careful about not doing too much. That's super fun. Bettina says, don't touch the sky. It's perfect. Sorry, I'm going to work on it more. <laughs> if anything, because I could leave it, but I just love how substantial that is. In fact, I, I got kind of a crazy idea. Actually, Bettina, you inspired me. I got a crazy idea. Okay, so my assumption was that it was going to be about this, this area, because it's in the foreground and it's more detailed. And, blah, blah, blah. and yes, we have Norman Bates in Utah. If Norman Bates... If his hotel was in Utah, that would be his house for sure. <laughs> and I was going to make it about this, but what if the landscape is all about the sky? What if the sky is what I choose to emphasize? That might be really fun. Maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe this is what is almost done. Hmm. I'm not sure. Bardo Teachings says, just joined. What's the focal point? The house. You would think it's the house, but I don't think it's going to be the house. I'm a little bit on the fence. I haven't totally decided just yet. By the way, for those of you guys who just joined, the links to the art supplies are in the YouTube video description below. And so are the reference photo links because the photos are tiny on my screen. You guys are going to want to use the higher resolution images. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna make it more about the sky. You know what though? I kind of hate the house now. Maybe I need to blur it some more. Oh, the house needs a little bit of work. Okay, let's go back to the house. And then maybe I'll get back into that sky. I don't know. All of a sudden I really don't like the house now. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Maybe I just need to simplify it. I think I made it too complicated. Let's just... I think I need to put some marks in front, like here. We need to push some of these strokes so the house is, like, tucked behind the strokes, like that. Maybe that helps ground it a little bit more. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the clouds. I'm gonna do a tiny bit and then I'm really gonna beef up the clouds. It's gonna be all about the clouds, which is so funny. That was not what I set out to do at all. <laughs> okay. You know what though? <sighs> I just went back to the house and I realized, hmm. I don't like that blob of blue. I think that was supposed to be the tree that's in front of the house, but it's bugging me. So I'm going to just pull it down, smear it out a little bit because I think it's a little bit much. And I'm going to go in. Okay. That's it. I'm picking now. This is not good. I got to, I got to leave the house. The house is not helping me right now. Ooh, it looks terrible. Crap. No, 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 no. This is not good. I don't like that. Okay, let's just redo that roof. 
put a little bit more emphasis on the architecture. Oh, guys, I am picking. This is not good. Not, not good. See how fast things can mess with you? It's like really difficult sometimes. Hold the bacon. Soften the house a tad. I think you're right. I think the contrast is too much. So let's just go. Oh, I know this seems ridiculous, but I'm just going to do this because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Just gonna, I'm just gonna scrub it out. <laughs> yes, that's totally what it needed. Oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. I knew I was, I knew I needed to do that. Okay, now let's go back. I'm not gonna do a lot, we're just gonna touch it up a little bit. Okay, I, I feel much better. I feel so much better. Okay, <laughs> let's just minor touch of the roof. Now I hate it. Oh my God. It looks so bad. I was like, oh, I took a risk. And now I regret it. Ugh. I, I think I should leave. I, I think I should not work on this part anymore. I think I'm killing it. Anybody else feel like they're killing it? I mean, not like in a good way, like murdering their drawing. I'm, I'm coming back. This is not a good idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I should stop with the house, Bardo. <laughs> yeah, you're totally right. Ugh. I should have stopped like 10 minutes. Why? I should have told me to stop. I should have predicted the future and known I was going to mess up the house. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to do it. Guys, stop me, please. Oh my God. It's so bad. It's I can't stop. <laughs> if I just <laughs> shoot. Oh, you guys, I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> shoot. This is really bad. <laughs> That's it. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's not fine, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to work on the glass. Okay. Let's get out. Is there no white? In, yeah, I guess there's no white. So I'm going to use the Terry Ludwig one instead. So let's just go to town, guys. Ready? Okay. Th this is what I've been waiting for. This is like the meat of... We're, we're going to make everybody forget about the house. <laughs> we're just going to... We're gonna give people reasons to not look at the house anymore. <laughs> it's just so bad. Oh my God, it's making me really upset. <laughs> We're just gonna pull that attention away from the house and just do something else. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, I know, I know. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but if you're sneaky, you can get people to look at other stuff. And that's why you shouldn't stay in one spot for too long. All right, I'm gonna do another pass of this white, these like little wispy strokes. Oh, that feels good. That, okay. <laughs> I'm really glad I stepped away from that. That was a big mistake. <laughs> And I'm gonna pick a couple spots to like really go to town with. Like I am pressing hard right now, guys. Let's just really go crazy with that. Ooh, that's fun. And I'm gonna show some of these very visible marks with my fingers. Actually over here, it's really cool. It does get very dark. So a little smudging, Ugh, I don't really like that. Let's get rid of that. I think that was too much. Oh, you guys, I'm, I'm hitting that place. You know, in the beginning you're all excited and you're like, oh, the world is my oyster. And now I'm like, no, it's not my oyster anymore. It just is not. <laughs> I like to call this spot this is the plateau. This is when life is just not that kind to me anymore as an artist. So this is a really nice, like purpley gray that I'm starting to push in. And I am gonna darken this. I think I need, I, I'm 
Should I try this one? Let me try this one, just because I know I'm trying to give the Diane Townsend pastels a shot. Let's see if that's a good idea. I don't know. It might not be. Let's just see what happens. Just really. Ooh, I kind of like drawing with the side of that. That's kind of like really fun. It's just some stuff with my palm. Ooh, it feels really, uh, it feels really mushy. Guys, I don't like this drawing anymore. <laughs> I should have stopped like 15 minutes ago. It was better 15 minutes ago. It really was. Shoot. It might be a drawing I need to step away from. You know what I'm going to do? I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I always do, which is just add more value because I just love darks. Yeah, okay. I know. I feel like I'm cheating because I'm putting in all this dark stuff. But you know something? I'd rather just mess with this drawing than just try to play it so safe. Let's just see what happens here. Some crazy marks. Oh, that's kind of fun. I think I'm gonna really, yeah, let's let's just make this dark. Oh, that feels good. Okay, that's I needed some value. I think that's what I needed. There just wasn't enough going on in here. Okay. It's a lot of layering. I'm still layering. And I'm, I'm really pressing hard now. There's a lot of pressure. At the very least, I'm playing. And that is not to be underestimated. That playtime matters, you guys. It really does. Okay, I, I think I need to bulk up what's happening back here. I, I told you guys I was going to smudge today. You see, I did not disappoint in that way. <laughs> and we're going to add some little touches of blue. Actually, I'm going to move some of that blue around the house. That might... Hmm. This is one big experiment, guys. I don't know what's going on now. See what happens when you don't use thumbnail sketches? <laughs> I mean, this is what happens when I don't use thumbnail sketches. Everything just goes a little crazy, doesn't it? Ooh, what happened? What is going on? You guys, this is the Wild West. I don't know what's happening. There's no rules anymore. What is happening? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel very rocky right now. This this is not, I don't know if this is good. I don't know if I'm just smudging that, like I'm trying to tell myself that I'm doing something, but I don't know that I really am. Oh dear. Oh, you guys, I'm so discouraged. Oh my God. Oh man, what is, I'm just gonna stare for a minute. What is going on? Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm not looking at the reference photos. I'm just looking at the drawing. I'm not going to do anything else. <sighs> do I like the blue in the back? I don't know. I think I, do I? I, I don't, I have no idea. Do people like that blue in the back? Tell me, I'm not really sure. I mean, it balances against the orange, but is it disruptive? Oh, this is like that point where you, you just don't know what's happening anymore. Let's try a little dance. Let's do a little glaze of white. And I'm gonna really step back. I think I need, what happened to that? Oh, here we go. If I'm gonna do this, I gotta do it, right? Let's get some, I'm, I'm not even looking at the reference photos now. I'm just making it up is fine. You can do that. What happened? Oh, what happened to my Terry Ludwig? Oh, there it is. Here we go. Ooh, 
Ooh, I kind of like that. I did that by accident. But you know, I think I'm going to keep doing it. I'm just making it up right now. Ooh, crap. That's a lot of pastel. Hang on one second. Okay. I kind of like, oh my God, this is so crumbly. Crap. Okay, here we go. I'm sort of liking this. Okay, don't overdo it, Clara. Don't. Ugh! Oh my God, stop. Okay. This is a family friendly channel. I'm going to try to control myself. <laughs> you don't want YouTube to demonetize us, right? Don't want that to happen. At the very least, I'm getting a workout. Are you guys? I'm getting an artistic workout. I, I didn't draw it all today. So this, this does feel good. As much as I'm sort of mad at myself right now, it does feel kind of good. I think I don't like that blue. That is the blue I want to get rid of. Let's just get rid of some of that. Maybe that's more what I want. Ooh, and I want more white. Let's get in there with a Terry Ludwig white and really build this like crazy. Just, I'm trying to channel John Constable right now. I'm very jealous of John Constable's mark making trying to do it i don't know if it's working he's just like and it like looks amazing and i'm not trying to do it it's not working i think we need okay this is what we need we need contrast down here Some little like puffs of white They're gonna push me up into that cloud we're gonna do this it's salvageable i can do it right right Just build those in a little bit more. Starving Artist says, if all us fails, draw a fast bender in the foreground. That will make your process happy again. <laughs> or I can just look at Instagram for all night, <laughs> which is basically why it's Kat Wong's fault. It's her fault that I ended up going down that rabbit hole of Instagram. C. Cantrell says, we watch the torture in the process. She verbalizes what many of us feel while we work. Yep, which is crazy. That's how we feel all the time. Lisa says, I love all the reverse teaching in the chat. Everyone is channeling past our profit. But no, you know what's awesome? You guys will probably see this during the special stream tomorrow with all six of us. I think what you guys will find very entertaining is your former students, sometimes they like throwing advice back in your face. Lauren is very good at that. She's like, Clara, you told, I'm like, yes, I know. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean I should take that advice. So she, she's a very, she's a very big fan of giving me my own advice. <laughs> Alex Rowe doesn't tend to do that. I guess Kat doesn't do it. Jordan does, but he does it in this like sneaky way where he's like so charming and nice, but he's sort of throwing me some shade. So he's, he's a little bit sneaky. Lauren's just like blatantly like putting it out there for me. So you, you guys will get a little taste of those snarky little interactions that we have at our prof. It's very funny. I mean, we, we just have so much fun working together. It's hard. I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we definitely have times where things are difficult, but we try to have fun at the same time. It makes it a little bit less painful when you're dealing with something that's just tricky and not very straightforward. Oh, I'm picking. No. John Constable, do it. Do it. Come on. Let's do it. I almost like this. I almost do. You know what we need? I think a little more purple and a little more like fuzz? Is that what we need? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Help me. Oh my God. <laughs> Vincent says, I love how you're able to salvage your art when it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it. I don't know that it's salvage as much as it is just keep 
going. That's more what it is to not give up too soon. I totally could have given up well a long time ago. When I, it was over. Once I messed up with that house, it was over. But you know what? I changed my mind. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just give it another shot. Because here's the thing, you guys. If you're working on a piece and it looks really crappy, it's like, what have you got to lose? <laughs> it already looks crappy. It's not going to hurt anything to make it crappy. Well, I don't know. Maybe it can get crappier. But anyway. <laughs> And W315 says, are you doing the art dare tomorrow too? Yep, tomorrow, double header, guys. You're going to see us at 12 o'clock Eastern and also 11 o'clock in the evening Eastern. Some person says, my illustration professor would say, what are you trying to achieve? For me, the main goal is to mix these references together to make something cohesive. That, if I were to sum it up, it would definitely be that. Beyond that, I don't have a lot more because it's a demo. I know that's an excuse. I should not be, I should have had a deep thing, but I don't know. I think it's because I just don't work with pastels that much. And so I get very, guys, the house is gone. Screw the house. I don't need the house. Why do I need the house? Not necessary. Oh, I feel so much better now that that house is gone. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to draw over it. We're just going to add a big patch of blue. Woo! Goodbye. Oh, I feel so much better, you guys. Oh, that was just, that's what I needed. I needed to say goodbye. Oh, now I like the blue. The blue is so much better now. Oh, yeah. So you guys, all this crap about like, oh, your drawing's going to get a bit better. It, it, no. <laughs> it's going to get worse before it gets better. I need a like hazy spot back here. Oops, Ugh, too much crap, hang on. All right, I, I know what I'm doing now. I, well, no, I don't, but I, I have a plan. I have a little bit of a plan. We're gonna pull up, and, and by the way, in case you guys are wondering, I'm not looking at the reference photos at all. I'm just making stuff up, <laughs> which is fine. You can do that. Nobody says you gotta stay with that reference. Okay, that is better. I want to make the clouds bigger, more substantial with some, oh, that one's, that looks like a beak. That looks terrible. I don't like that. Oh, you know what I need? I need like a little bit of blue up there at the top. Not very much, but just like some patches of it to break up some, that, that was the issue. I, I needed that instead of the white. It's a little bit better. Maybe like another little bit of blue in there. Let's see. Okay, it's time to move on from the sky. That is uh, not happening. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I just read Angie's comment. It's like the landscape got rid of a tumor. <laughs> Yep, that is definitely one way to say that. <laughs> okay. All right. I wouldn't say I like it, but I'm I'm getting there. Actually, let me change the focus because now that I've worked on it for a little bit, I want to make sure the focus is correct. Okay, good. Let's do a little bit of work on the bottom. I, I think that's one. I'm going to kill it if I don't. If I spend too much time on it. So, okay, let's get in here with some of this new pastel stuff. And I'm just gonna go to town on these steps and really show some of the divisions, all the stuff that I was holding back on for a while. I'm gonna start digging it in. Actually, I don't like this new pastel purple. It's like a little bit too much. Although I shouldn't use, I don't want to use this color again because I already used it so much up there. I don't think I want blue though. Maybe I just need boring old brown. Maybe that's it. Sorry, brown. I didn't mean to call you boring, but uh, I just need dull, dull stuff over here. Although maybe this doesn't have the value that I want might not be dark enough. Ugh. Oh, I don't like that. That's bad. Ugh. No. 
what do I need? Do I need, I don't want to resort to this color again because I feel like I used it too much. I don't want to do black though because black is a little bit too much. Hmm. Let me try this dark brown. This might be, because I think that this is getting too bright. Like I don't like, I want it to be more saturated. So maybe less saturated rather. Maybe I just need to put like a yucky gross gray and just dull down the whole thing. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, let's just use the gray. The purple is too much. I don't like the purple. So I'm just going to do like a passive gray. This whole area is going to get very muddy very fast, but that's what I want right now. I want to pull down the saturation. Hmm. Shoot. I don't know what I want to do here anymore. This is getting, oh, shoot. Okay, you know what I need? I need some of this yellow back here to stick out. Oh, that's what I need. I need the yellow to like freshen it up because there is quite a bit of negative space back there. All right, that grounds it a little bit better because I'm trying to connect these two spots so they don't feel too separate. Like that? Hmm. I'm just going to let that disintegrate. <laughs> it's just going to go to crap. It's like, whatever. All right. Maybe a couple of strokes in here. I guess goodbye to that tree. Yeah, the, the tree. <laughs> goodbye. Sorry. You're not relevant anymore. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of black. Not a huge amount but I need some structure in here. Like maybe let's channel some Andrew Wyeth. Love Andrew Wyeth. Oh, he's so good. I don't know why people complain about him. Like I wasn't aware about this, but they said that a lot of critics really did not like his work. I'm like, what? You guys are jerks. <laughs> you really are jerks. <laughs> I'm not trying to do straight black, but I'm just trying to like give this a little more structure maybe i do need to do something over here because this is definitely getting lost over here i want it to be see there's like a lot of crap back here so i'm trying to like let's just go kind of crazy with marks you know what the heck it's fine let's just do it <laughs> see this is what you guys do it's like you work on the drawing long enough that you're like, oh, whatever. <laughs> like you just get, you get to a point where you just like, don't care anymore. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to stick with the black here just to enunciate some of it. And I'll put little pieces of the black back here, but I'm going to let it like fade, like the further out I get. It's going to become less and less. Hmm. Maybe another pass. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> you guys have such great comments. Some person says, I'd look for forms in it to hint at what to do. That's a good idea. It, it is time to step away from some of these references. I really want to just work this for a little bit. I don't want to overdo the black, though. So actually, I'm going to switch to this dark purple. Is that the same dark purple? Yeah, it is. Okay. Because I do want this to be more substantial but it's, it needs more than this. I, I don't feel that right now it has the, the mass that I want. But <laughs> any, any amount of trying to make it look perfect, whatever that's supposed to mean, it's gone. I'm just done. You guys ever get to that point where you're just like, whatever, screw it. I mean, if I wasn't on YouTube, I'd be saying something else, but you know, just use your imagination. <laughs> Um, 
I mean, I'm really bad. I, I use a lot of bad words. <laughs> if I was not on YouTube, you guys would be hearing something else. <laughs> hmm. I think th this needs to come into play. I think I lost my negative space. Let's see how that might help me out. Like just pull out these pockets of yellow. That might be like a nice contrast to pull away from some of the other stuff. Because that does help a little bit. Oh, and actually there's this white here. I should do that white. That would be a nice... Yeah, because there's all this like snow back here. I, I'm not really a snow landscape person. Like I, I knew this artist who would go every year to paint in Antarctica. I'm like, no, thank you. Okay, <laughs> like I do not need that. I'm sure it's beautiful. It's just not up my alley <laughs> as an artist. I mean, if I could do it without all the, you know, negative degree weather, I'd be there in a second. Oh, and you know, it's almost like these patches of white on the fence. Oh, and you know, I totally, not even looking, there's like a little thing of white here too. And then here, oh, that's it. How did I like skip over those little bits of white? That's really weird. There's more here too. Ooh, it's fun. Okay, I think what I want, more structure here. Let's really let these parts stick out more in terms of value. And some more black. I'm getting close though, guys. I, I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel the painting saying, please stop, no more. <laughs> please stop while you're ahead. I mean, not like I'm really ahead, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Let's just go a little crazy. Cause you know what, why not? And speaking of that, I think we need to add some last minute marks here in the front make things a little crazier because why not and maybe bulk up some of that okay a little bit more back here because we lost some of that yellow pull some of that back Let's see what's going on Ugh, see how gross my hands are this is really nasty Ugh. Okay, the squint time. You know what I'm going to do? I need to put it away <laughs> because I, I've been staring at it for so long. I can't tell what's happening anymore, even though I'm like working on it right now. But, oh, wait a second. But this brown is fun. Okay, hang on. I, I lied. There's, there's work to be done down here. Just a little, not a lot, not a lot. Just a little, little touch. Some of this burnt sienna. Oh, that's kind of, oh, that's what I need. I need this like crazy, wacky burnt sienna in the foreground. Oh, this is such a wacky drawing, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know that I want to mess with it. I gotta take risks, right? All right, let me see what people are saying in the chat. Jade Leaf says, this art piece has been an emotional roller coaster ride 100%, can absolutely relate. Yup. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Crossick says the right side kind of looks like a transition from a burning house, kind or something. And then you've got the happier feeling on the left with the bright colors to a better future. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about the better future, but the storm part, I can definitely relate to that. Starving Artist has part two of this in a few days. That might have to be it because I'll tell you guys, I don't know that it's done, but it's definitely time for me to step away before I kill it. 
I think I need time to step away and get some distance because it's just really, really hard. Bailey says, the whole piece makes me feel like I'm being invited into brighter times. I think the darkness as a result from the tree turned into a happy accident. Yeah, you know, I was so convinced that I needed that tree and now I don't miss it. I mean, I don't miss that. I don't miss the house at all, which is so silly because it's like I started out, oh, mysterious house. It looks so cool. And I totally ditched it in the end. I mean, that definitely can happen. <laughs> So you guys, I hope that you will be joining me in the ArtProf Discord. I will be hanging out in the Art Alongs channel. The invite link is in the video description below. Subscribe to the ArtProf YouTube channel so you can continue to grow and develop as an artist. And I want to say a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters. Did everybody see that fourth column? I would love to add a fifth column because... We just have, actually at this point, just one day because <laughs> it's late now. To do the winter raffle tomorrow is your last day to participate. All six of us will be on the stream tomorrow. If you guys feel that you get something from Art Prof, that you learn something, you gain something from hanging out with our crazy emotional <laughs> roller coaster ride of the streams, support us. We need the resources to keep this available and free. I don't want to set up a paywall because I think that really changes access for a lot of people. But to do that, we need people to support. So please make that something to consider. And remember, the raffle link is in the YouTube video description below. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.